Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the show that rewards obscure answers rather than the obvious ones. Let's meet today's players. And couple number one. Hi, uh, yeah, my name's Paul. This is my wife, Jenny, and we're from London. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Michael. It's my partner, Alison. We live in a village called Hartley Whitney in Hampshire. Couple number three. Hi, my name is Jill. This is my partner, Nicola. And we're from Bury in Greater Manchester. And finally, couple number four. Uh, my name's Amber, and this is my boyfriend, Rory, and we're both from Scotland. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. Very warm welcome to the show. Lovely to have you here. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. Hitting stupidity with a shovel and burying it. It's my partner's friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Hello, audience. Hello, cameras. Hello, Frosty and Paul, the floor managers. Hello, Sander. Hello. Hello, contestants. That's everyone, isn't that it? That is everybody. Surely. Now. Yeah. Uh, now we've got three new pairs today, which doesn't happen uh, yeah. too often. Mm. Uh, but there are returners. We've got class in our returners, Michael and Alison, who've been through to two head to heads in a row. Uh, maybe third time lucky. We shall see. But welcome to all of our newcomers. Lovely to have you all here. Uh, you'll find us friendly, accommodating. I think so. Uh, but listen, you've got to play by the rules. That's all we ask. Oh, you've got to play by the rules. Oh, Lord, yes. And there aren't many of them. No. Lowest scorer? Oh, yeah, it's pretty much it. Don't say before my time. That, apart yeah. from that, it's pretty much it's free all you've got to do. Um, thank you very much indeed. I'm going to tell them about the jackpot round oh, in the last show because yeah. Amy and George went through to the final, didn't win the jackpots. We're adding another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at... £4,750. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. <laughs> uh, you know this, but just remember at all times, it's the pair with the highest score at the end of each round who will be eliminated. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this afternoon is... North American music. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Canadian acts and their hit singles. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. Mm, intriguing, Interesting. 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 On each board, we're going to show you the titles of seven UK top 40 singles. Um, they're all by Canadian acts. We'll show you the year they were hits. But who were the acts, please? It's a lot of Canadians. A lot of Canadians. Yeah, I can think of a few. OK, let's reveal our first board of seven hits by Canadians. Who are these Canadians? We've got... Diana, 1957. Seasons in the Sun, 1974. Ironic, 1996. My Heart Will Go On, 1998. Skater Boy, 2002. Call Me Maybe, 2012. And In My Feelings, 2018. We don't normally run them chronologically like that. Jenny, Hi. welcome. Hi. Um, tell us all about yourself. Uh, I'm 28 and I work in advertising for a newspaper. For a newspaper based in London? Uh, yeah, well, we've got uh, a few national titles and regional titles across the country as well. I see. And what do you do for fun, Jenny? I set up recently a business um, making napkins. Out of linen? Uh, so I design the fabric myself and the patterns, send that off to get printed. Um, they send it back and then I sew it into napkins. Very nice idea. What particularly marks them out? They've got sort of racy patterns. Uh, bright, colourful patterns, all about bringing colour into your home. I think that's a lovely thing. Now, Jenny, the board of Canadians. Hmm. Um, I know a few... I really hope this is right. Call me maybe Carly Rae Jepsen. Carly Rae Jepsen getting a nod from Paul. <laughs> a thoughtful nod. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Carly Rae Jepsen. For call me maybe. Absolutely right. Carly Rae Jepsen, it is down. That goes to 27. What a great start. Mm -hmm. Brilliant low score. Yeah, debut single went straight to number one in the UK, but um, uh, she was third on Canadian Idol. That's where, uh, that's where she started off. Oh, I didn't now, know that. Now, do you know what the Canadian for napkin is? <laughs> napkin? It's napkin, yeah. That's <laughs> it's the same. They use Did the you same notice I put, a, I put a twang? Oh, napkin. I put a twang on yeah. there. But it's good for international sales. So napkin. You don't need to change the website. They that's know what good. you're talking about. Yeah, that's good. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Michael, welcome back. This is your third and final attempt. <sighs> Tell us more about yourself, Michael. So, I work in marketing for an IT company, and in my spare time, which we don't have a lot of because we have four children between us, if I'm not on the golf course, I'm a bit of a sucker for a puzzle. I love a puzzle. Um, do, you, do you like really, really complicated ones? Well, it's anything, really. So it could be a jigsaw, Sudoku, crossword, one of those naff things you get in a Christmas cracker. Do you spend a long time going, or are you one of those people who can work things out very quickly? 
No, it often takes me a long time. No, it's good. frustrating. If I were any better at crosswords, I wouldn't enjoy them as much. Because a good crossword, a good tricky crossword, can take me most of a day. And if I, you know, yeah. you see people who can just go, yeah, 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 and I think, like, what? What's the, what's the point? I'm a bit the other way. Oh, why? You you I just dash them off. <laughs> oh, I see you chuck it. And you've got to chew it for a while. Um, now, Michael, what are you going to go for on our board? I would have gone with Carly Rae Jepsen because that song was number one when my daughter was born. Oh. Um, but I would take the one above Skater Boy, which I think is Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne, says Michael. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Avril Lavigne. Avril Lavigne is right. 27 is the only score we have at the moment. That goes to 35. Uh, yep, uh, another one that released, uh, released that as a teenager, Skater Boy. Had loads of other hits. She was born in uh, Ontario, which is in Canada. In Canada, you know. Uh, which is where they call Napkins Napkins. Like they probably that. don't, actually. I made that up. They probably have some <laughs> completely different name for it. I bet they do. They probably call it a table towel. <laughs> That's it. Don't you think? Yes, a knee flannel. <laughs> yes, I don't know. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Nicola, Hi. welcome to Point. It's lovely to have you here. Tell us all about yourself. So, I'm Nicola. I'm from Manchester and I work in network services. Very good indeed. What do you like to get up to for fun, Nicola? So, for fun, with my partner, I film uh, YouTube videos. We do uh, videos on Pokemon, so we're quite a big fan of that franchise. Very good indeed. OK, now, Nicola, what would you like to go for on our board? So, there's one that I think that's fairly risky, but I'm going to leave that one. I'm actually going to go with My Heart Will go, up, go On, Celine Dion. Celine Dion, says Nicola. Let's see if that's right for My Heart Will Go On. It absolutely is right. And that goes down to 72. 72 for Celine Dion. Yeah, the youngest of 14 children. No! Celine Dion. Yeah, born near uh, Montreal. That's amazing, isn't it? Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Rory, welcome to Point. It's good to have Hi. you here. Tell us all about yourself. Yeah, I'm Rory, originally from Scotland, now live in London, uh, working in operations for, like, an asset manager. And what do you do for fun, Rory? I uh, like football, so quite like sport and football, also playing a bit five-a-side, so... Yeah. <laughs> OK, very good indeed. This board is all yours. Do you want to go through it and fill in the blanks? I think of ones I was going to go for have already been picked. I'm going to go for the bottom one, In My Feelings, and the only popular Canadian artist I can think of, Drake. So that's all I can think of. Shall we see? Drake for In My Feelings. How many of our 100 people said it? But is it right? It is Drake. Very well done. That's a great answer, Rory. Look at that. Down he goes to seven. Very well done. Yeah, one of three number ones he had uh, in 2018, Drake. He's from Toronto. Uh, an analyst said uh, that Drake was, is responsible for about 5% of all tourism in Toronto. Wow. And that's a that's lot of tourism. It's like an $8.8 .8 billion industry. And he's a, uh, responsible for Yeah, so nearly half a billion he's responsible for, nearly. I hope they give him a plaque or something like that. <laughs> that would be nice, Do you know what I mean? It? Nice plaque, so. a Toronto plaque. Yeah, Drake mm. plaque. Oh, Drake. Drake plaque's hard to say. Isn't it? Drake plaque. But do you know what they call a napkin in, uh, in Canada? It's a Drake plaque. That's what they call it. <laughs> Lovely packet of Drake plaques, please. Oh, nice. Let's look through the rest of these, shall we? Do you know uh, Diana? No. Very old school. Paul Anker. OK. He would have scored you 11 seasons in the sun. Comes up on here quite I often. Know. Terry Jacks. Terry, thank you. Yeah. Would have scored 21, and you'll know ironic. Is uh, Alanis Morissette. Alanis <laughs> Morissette, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And that would have scored 24. So the best answer on the board there, Rory, is Drake. Well done. There we go. Thank you very much indeed. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. Seven, the best score of the past, Rory. You were teeing us all up for something catastrophic there, and you go and waltz off with the <laughs> lowest score. I think we've got your number, Rory. Um, <laughs> there we are. Seven is where you are. Then we travel up to 27, which is where we find Jenny and Paul. 35, where we find Michael and Alison. And then 72, Nicola and Jill. Jill, you're ahead for now. Who knows what will happen on the next pass? But a lovely low score from you would just even things up. So very best of luck with that. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put seven more hit singles by Canadians up on the board. And here they are. Heart of Gold, 1972. Tom Sawyer, Live, 1981. Everything I Do, I Do It For You, 1991. Man, I Feel Like A Woman, 1999. Man Eater, 2006. Haven't Met You Yet, 2009, and Love Yourself, 2015. There we are. Amber, welcome. Great to have yeah. you here, Amber. Tell us all about yourself. 
Um, I'm originally from Scotland and I work in marketing for uh, advertising and film production agency. That sounds fun. And what sort of things do you get up to, Amber? Um, kind of like yoga, cycling, cooking quite a lot at the weekends and stuff. OK, very good. Now, Amber, you're on seven. Okay. What are you thinking of? Um, I think my mind's gone completely blank and I know some of them on the board and it's not, not arriving to me, but I might have to do one that's really obvious and ruin the score. <laughs> Probably Man, I Feel Like a Woman, Shania Twain. OK, you're going to go Shania Twain, Man, I Feel Like a Woman. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Shania Twain. There's your red line. Shania Twain is right. You are through to round two. Look at that, very well done indeed. 49 takes the total up to 56. Very well played here, yeah, born in Windsor, Ontario. And the video for that is like a, 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 a mock-up of the Robert Palmer Addicted to Love video, but the other way around, with her backed by various models, male models. Clever. That was clever. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Jill, welcome to Pointless. Great Thank to have you. you here. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, my name is Jill. I'm 32 from Manchester, and I work in a betting shop. Does that mean you become an expert? Or have you learnt all the odds? That's exciting. Yeah, it took me a while, because a lot of it is, yeah. uh, if computers go down, you have to learn it manually, so oh, maths wow. was never my strong subject. So sometimes school, you've, got, so... you've got a slip coming and you've got to work it out. Yep. At least you've got lots of pens. <laughs> oh, there's plenty of pens. Plenty Doesn't of pens. really always work. <laughs> oh, I see, yes. Very good point. Uh, now then, Jill, you are on 72. We, let's have a nice low score from you. I am probably going to go, because I do know a few of them on that board, for the 2006 money to buy Nelly Furtado. Nelly Furtado says Jill. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. There's no red line for you. It's your the high scorers at the moment. Nelly Furtado, absolutely right. And down that goes to 18. Very well done indeed. And that takes your score up to a lovely round 90. Yes, yeah, good answer. Giving yourself a chance there. Nelly Furtado also did I'm Like a Bird. What's she up to now, oh, Nelly Furtado? I don't I know. I've for her in a while. Uh, and that's not a cover of the, uh, of the Hall & Oates track, if anyone was saying Hall & Oates. It did cross my mind, then 2006, luckily. Yeah, and they're not, they're not Canadian. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, Alison, welcome back. Thank you. Um, remind us about yourself. Tell us more. Uh, so, I'm a wellness instructor in a retirement village. Um, but when I do have a bit of spare time, I love... Drawing. Is this something you recommend in your wellness, in fact? It is something that I recommend yes. in my wellness. Did you discover yeah. it, in fact, through the wellness I did, you program? know, I did, yeah. A lot of our residents like to do um, adult colouring. Yeah, <laughs> And I yeah. said, why not extend that into just being a bit yeah. braver and getting... very good. Getting a bit of own. charcoal or a, or a sort of H... or a sort of yeah. 2B pencil. <laughs> I love a range of pencils. Oh, so do I. Love yeah. a range. Love a range. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, now, Alison, what are you going to go for? You're on 35, which means 54 or less gets you into round two. Uh, so I'm going to go for a bit of a risk and say Heart of Gold is Neil Young. Heart of Gold, Neil Young. Let's see. 1972 sounds about right. Here's your red line. Is Neil Young right? Can we get below that red line with it? It is right. You are through. And down it goes to seven. Very well done indeed, taking your total up to 42. Yeah, very well played. Good risk. Another one who was born in uh, Toronto, but brings less tourism in than, uh, than Drake, it turns yeah. out. That's a beautiful song, yeah. Heart of Gold, isn't it? What a yeah. wonderful track. Mm. I mean, so mm. many beautiful songs from here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, now then, Paul, welcome to the show. Good to have Thanks. you here. Tell us all about yourself. Uh, I'm 28, uh, originally from a town called Ballymena in Northern Ireland, uh, living in London with my wife, Jenny and I'm the uh, manager of an escape room in London. Is it always fun, the escape room? I Absolutely mean, not. No. Um, no, I was going to say, a little bit claustrophobic from time to time. I know you're not in the room, but, I mean, mm. you know, you're... I mean, our office does feel claustrophobic I should think it does. I mean, there must be an irony. You must all... Everyone must say at some point, oh, I wish we could escape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's fun. I mean, the, I guess the, the worst about it would be the um, repetitive jokes that people say on arrival, thinking that, you oh, know, it's yeah. the first... yeah. Like, oh, it's the puzzle trying to find the place. And you just have yeah. to kind of go... Hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You try presenting a show called Pointless. <laughs> you know uh, what? Yeah, you might have it a little worse <laughs> yeah. than us escape room managers. Fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd miss it if it stopped. <laughs> People stopped sidling up to me in supermarkets and saying, a little bit pointless. <laughs> oh, I'd miss that. Uh, now, Paul, listen, this board is all yours. Talk us through it. Um, 
I think I know three. I, I should know four because um, I, everything I do, I do it for you. The name has just escaped me, but I haven't met you yet. I think it's Michael Bublé, Love Yourself, Justin Bieber. I'm going to go for uh, Tom Sawyer, which I'm 90% sure is Rush. Rush for Tom Sawyer. Let us find out. Here's your red line. Is Rush right for Tom Sawyer? How many people said it? It's right. You are in round two. Look at that, Danny goes to four. That's a brilliant answer. And in fact, the best answer of the entire round takes your total up to 31. Very well done. Yeah, terrific answer. Yeah, they're from uh, Toronto uh, as well. Rush. Now, everything I do, I do it for you was Brian Adams. Brian Adams. Yeah. Yeah, um, lucky, lucky you forget. Uh, <laughs> 54 points for that. Haven't met you yet. You're quite right. It was Bublé. Uh, he would have scored you 26. And Love Yourself was Justin Bieber. And he would have scored 19. So, Rush, best answer on the board. Well played. Thank you very much indeed. Well, that brings us to the end of our first round. It means we have to say goodbye to our first pair. Oh, Jill and Nicola, you've only just got here. <laughs> we'll see you next time. And I'm sure we can take it a bit further then. But uh, thank you very much indeed. Meanwhile, Jill and Nicola. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Well done, everybody. We made it to our Canadian round. Best luck to all three pairs. Our category of round two this afternoon is... Snooker. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? Go and whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Snooker World Championship semi-finalists from 1980 to 2020, inclusive, as they could. Richard? Yep, anyone who's reached the semi-final at the Crucible in the uh, World Championship, please, starting in 1980 and all the way up to the 2020 semi-finals. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Paul? Um, I only, I've only got one name in my head, um, Judd Trump. Judd Trump. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Judd Trump. OK, let's find out how many of our 100 people said Judd Trump. Trump is right. Oh, look at that. Very well done indeed. Goes down to four. What a great start for the round. Four for Judd Trump. Uh, yeah, world champion in 2019, Judd Trump. Still only scoring four points, uh, which is a brown. Um, four semi-finals, though. 2011 was his first semi-final. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Michael. I know a few. It's hard to know what's the obscure ones. I'm going to say Ken Doherty. Ken Doherty, says Michael. Should we find out how many of our 100 people said Ken Doherty? Ken Doherty is right. Judd Trump is the only one we have at the moment. Four for Judd Trump. Ken Doherty goes down to one. Look at that. Very well done indeed, Michael. Yeah, another world champion. 1997, he was world champion. They say, I think it's apocryphal, there was uh, no crime recorded anywhere in Dublin on the night that he won the, uh, the world championship. That's what they say. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Rory. I know nothing about uh, snooker. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> this is fun. Are uh, you going to? Does that mean you, you? I mean, is there a big name you can go for? I or, think yeah. Or are we in the territory where you're going to be making up snooker type names? Uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Okay. All right. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Ronnie O'Sullivan is right. That goes down to 44. Yeah, 12 semi-finals. First one, 1996. Uh, and then 24 years later, um, 2020, uh, wins it half a million quid. He's done all right, hasn't he? 24 yeah. years. Snooker's one of those games where you can, uh, you can stay at the top for a really long time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. Well, that brings us to the halfway point of this round. Um, let's go through those scores. One, the best score of the past, Michael. Very well done, indeed. Then up to Paul and Jenny on four, and then up to 44, where we find Rory and Amber. So, Amber, we are depending on your <gasps> snooker knowledge. Uh, we're going to come back down the line now. Will the second players please step up to the podium? OK. Now, then, Amber. Remember, we're looking for the name of any player who's played in a semi-final at the World Snooker Championships between 1980 and 2020. Inclusive. I'm, I'm just going to make a name up. Oh, this is fun. Because I don't watch snooker. Oh, this oh will be God. fun. Even if it's wrong, let's just have a lovely name. Um, Jim McCormick. <laughs> Jim McCormick. 
Jim mm -hmm. McCormick. <laughs> no red line for you as you're the high scorers at the moment, but let's see if Jim McCormick does anything. Oh. <laughs> That's not bad at all. Um, I mean, as a name. Sorry, it was a terrible answer. Yeah, but, um, no, it was uh, quite bad. 100 points is what it scores. Takes your total up to 144. Uh, yeah, Jim McCormick, I'm afraid his last semi final was 1979, so just before, <laughs> uh, just before our time. No, no Jim McCormick. No, but it's, we, uh, I mean, oh. convincing. Absolutely. Yeah. Alison, you are through to the next round. Doesn't matter what you score. OK. Um, I have to go with somebody quite obvious, I'm afraid, and say Steve Davis. Steve Davis, why not? Let's see. No red line, you're already through. How many people said Steve Davis? Goes down to 50. Still scoring the big numbers. Look at that. Takes your total up to 51. Yeah, 11 semi-finals for Steve Davis and six wins as well. Um, OK, now, Jenny, you are also through to the next round. It doesn't matter what, uh, what you score here. Thankfully. Um, Judd Trump and Ronnie O'Sullivan are the only two snooker players I can think of. So I am going to go for Eric Q. Eric Q. Yeah. Named after the tool of his trade. Yeah. Eric Chalky Q. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, no red line for you. You're already through. How many people said Eric Q? No, no, I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. That scores you 100 points, takes your total up to 104. Couldn't matter less, you're through. Lovely to hear as well. Yeah, Eric Q was a New York rapper in the, uh, the mid-80s. Uh, mid um, now, listen, nobody here enjoyed that round. I understand that. <laughs> I do appreciate that. Sometimes the rounds are for people at home as well, though, so there will be people shouting out answers. Well done to everyone who managed to get through it, though. <laughs> uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give some low scores just so people playing at home um, can uh, satisfy their curiosity. One point for the following people. Alan Robidoux, David Gilbert, Ding Jun Wee, uh, Doug Mountjoy, Eddie Charlton, Joe Swale, Kirk Stevens, talking to Canadians, Kyron Wilson, Marco Fu, Mark Allen, Nigel Bond, Peter Ebden, Steve James and Terry Griffiths. And now some pointless answers. All of these would have added £250 to the jackpot. Ali Carter, Barry Hawkins, Graham Dot, who's a champion. They've all been in finals, those three. Uh, Matthew Stevens, another finalist. The, the great Neil Foles does lots of commentary as well. Um, the late lamented Paul Hunter was a pointless answer. You could have had Stuart Bingham, another champion. Stuart Bingham, Tony Knowles, famously knocked Steve Davis out in the, the first round after Davis had uh, won the title. Tony Mio, as well, was a pointless answer. There's a few others. Uh, David Taylor, Darren Morgan, uh, Anthony McGill, who was the 2020 um, semi finalist, he was a pointless answer as well. Very well done if you said any of those at home. And apologies in the studio for giving you that round. Thank you very much indeed. We've we got to do We've got to ask something. Oh, you have to. We've got to ask, <laughs> got to ask something, something. You know, and I figured after Canadian uh, pop stars, which is a bit of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You oh, know, listen. bit of snooker. TL, yeah, absolutely. Um, anyway, thank you very much indeed. Well, that brings us to the end of our second round. It means we have to send a pair home, Amber and Rory, I'm afraid, on, uh, on the back of Jim McCormick. Um, <laughs> we have to say goodbye to you. It's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you for playing and playing thank so you. well. Uh, we'll see you next time. I'm sure we'll go much further then, but meantime, thank you very much. Uh, but for the remaining two parts, it is now time for the head to head. Congratulations, Michael and Alison, Paul and Jenny. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for the jackpot, which currently stands at £4,750. But before we play the head to head, Shall we see if we can't boost that jackpot a bit with a couple of pointless answers? Here goes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many islands and atolls in the Indian Ocean as they could. Richard? Yep, six names on the board. As always, two of them will be pointless answers and two of them will be red herrings. Can you find the pointless answers? 250 quid for each. Thank you very much indeed. So let's reveal our six potential pointless islands and atolls and here they are. We've got... Phuket, Nothing, Lankawi, Fuladu, Zanzibar, Shadow. There we are. So we know Phuket, 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 Phuket and Zanzibar, right. are. Zanzibar. Yeah. They definitely are. They definitely are. Nothing seems like... I feel like that's too obvious. I, I feel like, like Fuladu should yeah. be one. Lankawi feels right to me. Mm. Yeah, those why. two in the middle. Yeah. I'm happy to go with either of them then. OK. OK. We're going to go with Lankawi. Lankawi. Ah, Lankawi. I say that in a dreamy voice for a good reason. I'll tell you why in a moment. Let's find out. Is it a pointless island or atoll in the Indian Ocean? It is. And I say it in a dreamy voice because I've been there. Ah, 
Oh, no, one! <laughs> Oh, no, I only told you that because I thought it was going to be pointless. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Langkawi wasn't a pointless answer. Now, Paul and Jenny, it's over to you. Yeah, I mean, we're we're sort of striking from nothing here. Well, actually, that's ironic because we're going to go for nothing, <laughs> I think. I think. Yeah, nothing. Um, yeah. nothing. Right. You're going to go for nothing. I com I'm completely with you. Yeah. Nothing, surely. That Please, can that be a pointless island? Oh, no. It's lazy, lazy, or, lazy, lazy, lazy. Or? Or it's from a film. Or they're perhaps they're trying to tell you nothing at all. Ah! Uh, <laughs> and you <laughs> fell <laughs> into the trap. That's, uh, that's genius. Oh, no, <laughs> nothing <laughs> at all. That's yeah, right. you'll give them that, right? Oh. You'll give them that. <gasps> um, there's still two pointless answers well, up there. Yeah. I'm going to come straight out and say something, but I yeah. think this is absolutely unacceptable. Phuket is a pointless answer. I mean, we've all heard of it, I know. What's the point of putting it in the round? Uh, for whatever reason, that's a pointless answer. Um, now, Zanzibar did score points, as I think everybody suspected. Uh, now, Full Hadu and Shadow, which of those is the pointless answer, which is incorrect? Mm. Mm. I'm wondering if Full Hadu is probably in Dr. Doolittle or something, and maybe um, Shadow. Shadow, because if nothing wasn't a, a real island, then Shadow, presumably. Yeah, I'm going to go Shadow. Well, uh, there's no. a silhouette island uh, in the Seychelles, but not a shadow island. And uh, Full Hadou is one of the Maldives. There we are. And it's, so Full Hadou and Phuket. There we are. Bad luck. Bad luck. We, we didn't find any pointless answers, but we all had a lovely time picturing the azure waters of Indian Ocean islands and atolls. Ah, oh, that's nice. OK, back to the here and now. Um, right, let's play the head to head. Now, the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot, and you're now allowed to confer before you give your answers, so that's nice. Best of luck to both pairs. Our first question this afternoon is all about... ..so-called flies. So-called. Richard. Yeah, well, five pictures of things that are called flies. Not all of them are true flies, though, but uh, we're going to show you the first and last letters of each of the bits that come before the word fly in their names. OK, thank you very much indeed. Let's reveal our five fly-ish is... Here they come. We've got A... D.L. Fly. B. D.N. Fly. C. H.R. Fly. D. F. E. Fly. And E. A. R. Fly. There we are. Now, Michael and Alison, you're a golden couple, so you get to go first. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to... We know five, four of them. I think we're going to go for C, which we think is hoverfly. Hoverfly, say Michael and Alison for C. Hoverfly. Now, Paul and Jenny, the flies. Talk us through them. A is damselfly. Dragonfly. Firefly. Me, yeah. And I can't work out what E yeah, is. Yeah, but I think um, we're going to have to try E because... Could it be an amberfly? The letters fit. <laughs> yeah, I think the other ones will be too high, so we'll have to try it. Um, amberfly. OK, amberfly. So we've got hoverfly and amberfly. Let's find out. Hoverfly is what Michael and Alison thought C might be. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said hoverfly. Oh, the fly is good. That goes down to 27. Oh, Amberfly, if it's right, would be great. Um, how many of our 100 people said Amberfly? I suppose, is it right? That's the first question. Oh, no! I'm so sorry, not Amberfly, but it's a great effort. Um, Hoverfly, well done, Michael and Alison. After one question, you're up 1 0. Yeah, it's tough. That's the word I would have looked for if I had to fill in those gaps. Hard to work out what it is otherwise, isn't it? Any clues? I mean, is there a clue in the picture to what Not that is? Not really. No. Uh, well, no, other, I mean, than, they're, other, they're, other than the name. They're beautiful wings. Look at that. In fact, mm. all the wings in these flies, these so-called flies all, are beautiful. All the, all the wings? All... Da, all 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 da
Now, turns out you didn't have to go for the risk. Oh, no. <sighs> yeah, sorry. Damselfly would have seen you uh, oh. win the point because Damselfly only scores 17. I guess lots of people must have looked at it and originally thought it was Dragonfly and then it's not, so maybe just kind of given up. But Damselfly would have scored 17. Dragonfly is a much bigger scorer. Would have scored you 83 points. And Firefly is a pretty big scorer as well. Would have cost you 79. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, now here comes your second question. Paul and Jenny, you go first, but you've got to win it to stay in the game, so best of luck. Our second question is all about... Michael Caine, Richard. Mm, five clues to facts now about Michael Caine. Lovely. OK, let's reveal the Caine facts, and here they are. We've got... Oscar nominated for playing the eponymous ladies' man in this 1966 film. He got his stage name from this 1954 Humphrey Bogart film based on Herman Wouk's novel. He played Alfred the Butler to this superhero in a trilogy of films directed by Christopher Nolan. The 1969 film The Italian Job saw him carrying out a gold robbery in the streets of this city and the name of his co-star in the film Miss Congeniality, who plays an FBI agent going undercover in a beauty pageant. There we are. Paul and Jenny will go first. One more thing. Okay, yeah. Um, we know a few of them. Uh, again, just trying to work out. Um, She's Lois. Best. Probably the first one. We'll go for Alfie. Alfie. Say, so Paul and Jenny. Alfie. So, Michael and Alison, do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? Uh, we don't know the second one. The third one we think is Batman. The fourth one I think is Milan, but I'm not certain. We're going to go for the bottom one, which we think is Sandra Bullock. OK, Sandra Bullock. So we have Alfie versus Sandra Bullock. Uh, Paul and Jenny have gone for Alfie. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Alfie for the top one. Alfie's right. Down goes Alfie to 25. Not bad, not bad. Michael and Alison, meanwhile, have gone for Sandra Bullock for Miss Congeniality. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock is right. 25 is what it's got to be. It's going to be, oh, 38 for Sandra Bullock. Which means, well done, Paul and Jenny, just what we needed. You're back in the game. After two questions, it's one all. Richard. Very well played. Let's fill these in, shall we? Um, the stage name, do you know where he got it from? No. He was in a phone box in Leicester Square and saw this film playing opposite when he was told he had to change his name. The Kane Mutiny. Ah. Very well done if you said that at home. Two points. Uh, he played Alfred in... Batman. Batman. Would have scored you 37 points. That's not Milan. It's Turin. Turin is the answer. That would have scored you... Three points. Now, Ooh. the very famous uh, car chase in that film, most of it is shot in Turin, apart from the bit actually in the tunnels, and that's in Coventry, in Coventry sewers. Is it really? Mm. Extraordinary. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. OK, now, here comes your third question. Whoever wins this one goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question is all about rooms and parts of the home in French. Richard. Oui, c'est ça. Uh, five or cinq... Um... Nice. French terms or words that are parts of the house or rooms. Sandra's going to read them out for us. Uh, and if you can tell us what they are in English, um, that would be lovely. Thank That's you. marvellous. OK, here come our five French parts of the home. In French. La fenêtre. La salle de bain. L'escalier. Le toit. Le grenier. There we are. Now, Michael and Alison will go first. Mm. Okay, so what is that? Yeah. So we're going to say la fenêtre is the window. Window for la fenêtre, say Michael and Alison. Right. Paul and Jenny, do you want to talk us through that board? So the salle de bain, um, bathroom, escalier, I think it's the stairs. Um, I recognise those two from, you know, studying French in mm. school, but... Um, yeah, yeah, I don't think I'm going to get there. Um, probably l'escalier, stairs. OK, la fenêtre and l'escalier. So we've got stairs, we've got window and stairs. Uh, Michael and Alison have gone for window, la fenêtre. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Window. La fenêtre is indeed window. 34 is what you score there. 
Paul and Jenny, meanwhile, have gone for l'escalier. Let's see if that is right for stairs. Stairs is right. Oh, it's all oh, 38 for stairs. And that means very well done indeed, Michael and Alison. Oh, by the thinnest of margins, you are through to the final 2-1 after three questions. Great head-to-head. -head. Well, be finally out of the head-to-head -head and into the jackpot yeah. round as well. Congratulations. <laughs> um, La Salle de Mar is the bathroom. the bathroom. Yep, 51 points for that. Uh, Le Toit. Le Toit. Is it the is it roof? It's the roof. The roof. Absolutely. Phew. It would have scored you 11. And the Le Grenier? Barn. It is not. Attic. It's just under attic. Yeah, ah. just under the roof of Le Grenier. And that would have scored eight points. So uh, Le Grenier is the best answer on the board. Well done if you said that. There we are. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. Well, the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round are Paul and Jenny. It's just your first show. This was just walking around the course. You shall be back. Um, but meanwhile, thank you very much for playing. We'll Thanks. see you next time. Um, for Michael and Alison, though, it is now time for the pointless fun. <laughs> Congratulations, Michael and Alison. You've fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £4,750. <laughs> now, that's a decent jackpot. You've timed this really well. This is your third appearance on the show. Um, first thing you have to do is choose your category from the four we put up on the board. What would you, what would you like to see come up? I think, well, 90s music, quite good. Yeah. Game of Thrones. Uh, Sports okay for me, but less so for you. Ge geography for me is probably better, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's find out what we've got on the board. Today's offering is this. Film composers, rare breeds of poultry, prime suspect, and South African Rugby World Cup teams. What do we think? Prime suspect is a bit of a gamble. It could be just a number try of it? things. Yeah. Give that a go? Yeah. I think we'll, we'll, we'll give Prime Suspect a go. OK, Prime Suspect's been up there for a while. It has, hasn't it? Mm. Um, I hope you watched Prime Suspect. That would be my only note, because we are looking for any cast member of the first season of Prime Suspect, any cast member of the second season of Prime Suspect, or any cast member of the third season of Prime Suspect. So according to uh, IMDb, anyone credited with appearing in any of those seasons of Prime Suspect, very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. OK, now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's put 60 <laughs> seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. I kind of hoping it wasn't going to be based on the programme. Yeah. Um, so, well, we know, obviously, Helen Mirren. <laughs> yeah. Top answer. Um, but take a guess, I think. Like, English actors. Yeah. Um, that potentially could have been in any of it, so... Yeah, in the early 90s. Like, Todd... Well, what was his name? He was in Grange Hill. <laughs> Todd McCarty. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Um, Martina McCutcheon, someone like that, would she have been in a... Uh, Word Who was on the one show the other day. Anna... Who's going to be in that? She's Marcella. And a feel potentially. Yeah. Uh, it's just ten a, seconds out. I'll pick. Random. Three guesses. Three guesses. So we don't want to say Helen Mary, do we? No. We just go with those on the field top we can't see. Okay, that I'm sorry to say is your time up. Or Thankfully, is your time up, depending on how you are enjoying your time uh, trying to make up members of the cast yeah. of Prime Suspect. Um, That's terrible. What three answers can you give me? We're going to say Todd McCarty. Todd McCarty for which? Oh, Ooh, the second one. For we'll say number all for the, the ninety-two. All for the second one, shall we? Yeah. Yeah. Todd McCarty, um, Anna Friel. Anna Friel, and Martin McCutcheon. And Martin McCutcheon, all for the 1992 prime suspect. OK, of those three, should we order them? Do you want to put one last? Which do you think might be your best shot? Let's go Todd McCarty. Todd McCarty will put last. Least likely to be pointless? Martin McCutcheon. Martin McCutcheon and then Anna Friel put in the middle. Let's put those answers up on the board in that order. And here they are. We have got Martin McCutcheon, 
Anna Friel and Todd McCarty. Well, it was a tough board for you, that one. I mean, it really was tough. You went for prime suspect. You've come up with three answers. Any of these feasibly could be there. If one of these turned out to be pointless and won you that jackpot, what would you like to do with £4,750? Well, we were talking about islands in the uh, Indonesia, weren't we? Very yeah. good. Um, anything else, Alison? I'd love to take all four kids on a, on a massive holiday, so, yeah. Well... Definitely very, very best that. of luck. Yeah. Um, let's put them all to the test. Martin McCutcheon is your first answer. In all three cases, we're looking for the cast of Prime Suspect 2. Let's find out if Martin McCutcheon is right. Let's find out if she's pointless for £4,750. Nope. No Martin McCutcheon. Let's not dwell on it. Let's move straight <laughs> on to Anna Friel. Now, Anna Friel, to me, feels like a really canny answer, actually. It just feel, it feels... Yeah, no, I don't know. Um, Bearing in mind, I know nothing, but um, let's find out. Anna Friel, is it a correct answer? Is she right? Is she pointless? £4,750 riding on it? No, sorry, no, <laughs> don't listen to me. Uh, your third and final answer for Prime Suspect 2 is Todd McCarty. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Todd McCarty for £4,750. Could he be pointless? Well... There we are. We need never mention this again. <laughs> um, that was a game attempt. Um, I'm afraid you didn't manage to find any correct answers, uh, nor indeed any pointless answers. So I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot, but you win today's trophy. So well done for that. You get to take that home, and you've been fabulous right away across three shows, actually. So well done. Thank you. Yeah, three head to heads is no mean feat. And uh, you didn't panic in that 60 seconds either. Those are perfectly valid answers. I know they're all wrong, but for a, for a subject <laughs> you know nothing about, I thought it was good. Todd Carty rather than Todd McCarty is the uh, the guy from EastEnders. A ah, okay. uh, couple of EastEnders answers up there. There's a very interesting EastEnders pointless answer later on, which we will get to. But we'll start with the first prime suspect. You could have had Jack Ellis, who's also pointless for um, number two. John Bow, Ray Fiennes, this is his first ever TV um, job. Tom Wilkinson as well. Everyone pointless there, apart from Helen Mirren, Tom Bell, Craig Fairbrass and Zoe Wanamaker. Everyone else a pointless answer. Um, now, the second prime suspect. Um, Andrew Tiernan, Colin Salmon was in it. Fraser James, Nina Sasanya. That was her second ever TV show, uh, Nina Sasanya. And uh, the ones that scored points there, Helen Mirren, John Benfield, Philip Wright and Richard Hawley. Richard Hawley was pointless for the other two, but scored one point for this one. Listen, let's take a look at an EastEnders name here. Danny Dyer <laughs> was pointless for the wow. third prime suspect. David Hewless, some big names there. Johnny Lee Miller, Mark Strong as well. Everyone pointless apart from Helen Mirren, Tom Bell, Karen Tomlin and Peter Capaldi. Uh, very well done if you've got any other answers at home. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Thank you, Michael and Alison. I'm sorry you didn't win the jackpot today. It'll therefore roll over onto the next show when we'll be playing for £5,750. <laughs> Join us then to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>